Hello, this is Bob Brown and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, January 7th, 2017. It's the Weekend Business, Business Science 101 Report. And in the USA Today uh, supplement of the Bloomington Herald Times here in Indiana, we see the tragedy that unfolded in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, five dead, eight hurt uh, at the Florida airport. The gunman came in uh, and shot five people dead and then he put himself on the ground and waited to rest. He reported have, uh, had, uh, he was from Puerto Rico, he had delusions, he had actually told authorities that he thought that he was under the control of ISIS. Now, for my master's thesis from Indiana Wesleyan, I did a, uh, a, a study on self-radicalization, and how businesses are gonna have to defend themselves against this scourge and problem. And with the internet and uh, radical ideas that people, especially young people, can get a hold of, people who are mentally unbalanced, people who have problems. This is a real danger. As we see at the Florida airport, uh, and this is no way a, um, a slam on the authorities, it's simply going to have to come into the, to the realm of businesses to provide their own security. Now businesses have been providing security forces for a long time, but I think nowadays this is going to have to be escalated to a new level. And the security is going to have to be physical security, it's going to have to be business process security, it's going to have to be cyber security, it's going to, have to be multi layers of security in your business. And one way that a small business can control uh, its security without hiring a security guard initially is by having security perimeter. I've looked at systems to, to lock your doors, to have, you know, uh, you know, entry, you say, well, I'm a publicly, you know, people come in and off the street all the time. Even there, you're going to have to start looking at ways of providing security and being secure. Uh, this problem is not going to go away. Self-radicalization uh, is a real danger to everyone. But it particularly can damage the economy if people don't feel safe going to your business or other businesses or to the mall. It will dampen things down considerably. I think in a part of the way that there was yesterday's article was on the closing of department stores and malls because of online, a lot of people no longer want to go to the malls because they say it's too much hassle, it's just easy to sit here and order online. But I think there is a small component and it's growing that people are worried about uh, it, you know, business place violence. It's usually called workplace violence. We need to broaden that scope a little bit and call it workplace violence where people will come in uh, off the street and try to damage your business or damage your mall to make a political statement by acts of violence. Uh, I don't really mind lawful protests at a business. I, I can kind of deal with that. Uh, I'm, if it was my business, I wouldn't like it, but I, I, we can all deal with the fact that someone has lawfully engaged in protests and as long as it's nonviolent, non-threatening and non, you know, uh, with no bigotry or you know racial slurs or no uh, foul language, that's okay. We can deal with that in an open society. But what we can't deal with is the fear that is starting to hang over all businesses that they could be, uh, you know, a target to be used by a radical uh, Islamist, a radical you know political person who says, "Hey, I want to make a point, and I'm going to use your business." Uh, and we've seen many, many examples of this, and I think we're going to see this continue to escalate. So my advice when I did my master's uh, capstone was that businesses are going to have to start in any way they can to start providing security for themselves, their employees, their business, uh, you know, their customers, and their vendors. And it's a, it's a tall order in an open society. One way, if it's possible, like I tell some businesses, if you can have magnetic locks on your door and you have a receptionist and you can let only people who need to be in and out of your business, that's the best way. If you can control the perimeter, that's great. Most businesses say, you're crazy, I can't work that way. I have an open door policy, people just walk in and out all the time. At that point, you're going to have to have a little, you're going to have to, at that point, I think businesses are going to have to consider stationing a security person to monitor that front door. And I think you're going to have to do it in two levels. One, you're going to have the physical presence of a person sitting there as a security guard. 
You know, I, I have a memory that's always bothered me. When I was in Washington, D.C. in about 1999, it was a really hot day in Washington, and we were touring uh, the nation's, we were touring the Capitol, and there was a section I walked along, and there was a sign that said, no entry Senate chambers. And I, I just was going up to try to get, I was just trying to look, I wasn't going to go in there. And as I walked up, I happened to pass by a, a place where two security guards were sitting, and this is the, they were the security guards that were guarding the, the, from the Capitol to the Senate chambers. And both these security guards were sound asleep on the desk, totally <laughs> zonked out. And I remember remarking, I said, isn't that just great? I mean, here's one of the most important areas in the U.S. government, two security guards. Now, the Senate wasn't in cha uh, session at the time. It was hot, and it was hot in the Capitol building that day, and they were stone cold sleeping right there. So I think that's why a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I really want a security guard because that's kind of my impression of security guards. They kind of seem not very effective. Well, again, a physical presence will make a difference. And then the secondary thing you're going to need is remote security cameras, and you're going to have to, have a remote, you're, you're going to, have to probably pay for a service to have someone like uh, ADT or other companies that actually have cameras and then they have a control center they're actually monitoring and there's a group of people who are supervised who are monitoring cameras of your business. That's probably a more affordable way for most people. Motion detector cameras can help you out a lot. You can set up motion detector cameras from Ubiquity. Uh, you can set them around your business and they, if there's motion during certain times you can set, they, it will take a picture and email you that picture of what's going on. So I want businesses to start thinking of ways to make their businesses more secure with the least intrusion as possible on the, you know, the, you know, the customer business relationship. Because you don't want people to think, hey, you're going into a fortress and people are like, well, I don't want to go in there. They have so much security, something's going to happen. So it's a two-edged sword. If you have no security, something could happen. And then what do you do? If you have too much security, yeah, you'll keep the bad guys away, but you also keep your customers away because they're like, wow, this place looks like it gets, you know, robbed a lot. What banks do is they have what's called a man cage. And if you go into most banks, there are, there's, a, there's a glass room at the entrance of every bank. There's the outer glass door and the inner glass door. And when you're walking in to a bank, you're going into what the bank calls a man cage. Now, there's usually someone who's the bank manager, the assistant manager. They're kind of the, uh, the security person there. If you come in and they don't like the looks of you, they'll hit a button, and that mag lock will hit on both sides of that man cage. And generally, those banks have bulletproof glass. So if they think, hey, this person looks like they're coming in to rob the place or they're going to cause trouble, the bank manager, the assistant manager, the tellers can hit that button, and they can trap the person in the man cage. Most businesses are kind of set up with a man cage already. So there's another option. If you have the glass door, you can have someone, you're going to have to rotate these people because they're going to get bored. They're not going to want to do it. You may rotate them in 30 minute shifts, 15 minute shifts and say, hey, it's your turn on the door. Keep an eye on the door. If you see someone that doesn't look right, just hit the lock. And of course, if the customer pulls them, they're going to be confused like what happened. And then you, you'll have to train people say, oh, just a second, that, that door got stuck or something. So the man cage concept is what banks use all the time. And banks, of course, have to have people coming in and out all the time. But their procedure is pretty, uh, it's, it's very powerful as long as it works. And, and the best way, if someone's coming in with a gun and you can clearly say, hey, this person's coming with a gun, as soon as they get in that man cage, they can lock it. And then they, then they have, the bank has security to clear everyone out of the way. They, they have the, uh, assailant, the potential assailant locked in the man cage, and of course the local authorities, the police, or the local sheriff can come and pick them up. So there are ways of doing this to protect your business that are not that costly, that can give you better security for your employees, yourself, and your customers, and we need to consider that. Almost every entrance, when I go to a business now, if I go to most stores, most stores have a man cage pre-built. They may not even think of it as a man cage. You go into a Sears, a Kmart, a Macy's, 
you go into Walmart, kind of has a man cage concept, I guess. Of course, they have their uh, Walmart greeters that I don't know if they have them anymore, but they have the Walmart uh, people there, kind of, especially at Sam's, they want to see your ID before you go in. So that's a low key way. When you go into Sam's, you show your ID and they get you in. If they don't like the looks of that person coming towards them, they're going to let someone know. So there are ways to set up. So if someone's kind of watching the door and someone comes in, they're not, they don't like the looks of it. I'm sure most retail stores are going to send a signal out to their manager like, hey, some unruly looking person just walked in here and I'm not so certain about them. So now the, cam the security people on the cameras behind the scenes can watch them. Again, if you don't have enough security cameras, sorry, the cat's deciding to be a camera person again. If you don't see it, if you don't have enough, you could contract out. You could even have this, your smaller business monitored from your house and have a family member that you could contact and say, hey, take a look at that camera and keep an eye on them. If something goes down, you call the police immediately. So there are ways that we can make our businesses more secure. So, so, so think about the concept of the man cage. Do you have a built-in man cage in your business? An outer door and an inner door. You have the outer door open, the inner door can be default open or can be default locked depending on the type of business you have. If you're an office that has you know infrequent visitors or scheduled visitors, lock your inner door and then the receptionist or someone can unlock that. It can even be, uh, nowadays, that door can be remote unlocked. You could have someone, you know, five states over unlock the door for you if they need to, because they could actually buzz the person and say, who is this? <clears throat> I'm, here, I'm here to see Mr. Jones. Oh yeah, I see you have an appointment, I'll buzz you in. So this is an area where a lot of small entrepreneurs can get into business. It's a way to protect your business. And again, we don't want to have people under the shadow of fear, but we want to make sure the employees of the business understands that we're protecting. So let's go over those ideas real quick again. Look at Ubiquity so, uh, uh, cameras and software. Fairly inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. Motion detector cameras. You set up a PC. If something's detected, it'll send you an email. That's if you were trying to look at your storerooms or your warehouses or outer areas. You can set up so if there's any motion, it'll take a picture. It's recording all the time. So you want a pretty good sized desktop, you know, box computer, not very expensive, just a lot of disk space to record your video, and then you'll have a good system. If you have the potential for a man cage, uh, I guess he wants to be on camera, so we'll put him on camera. If you have the potential for a man cage, then, you know, where you have an outer door and an inner door, like a glass door, then you can lock the inner door, put mag locks, you have to go through the fire department code, and that, what that means if a lot of places, if you have mag locks or some type of electronic lock, if the fire alarm goes off, it has to auto unlock those doors so people can escape so they're not trapped. Uh, and that is what banks use. They have the man cage concept and you're going to have to designate people. If you don't want to do all that, then have a, te a security team. They're not to engage anybody, of course, but they're to alert people like someone is posted near the door. You have, you have a procedure that says, hey, if somebody's coming towards the door or coming into the business, you don't like the looks of them, you either use Google Hangout or Windows Skype or chat or text or whatever, and you send a message out saying, hey, someone's in the store, we're not liking looks of that person. And if you have an external company monitoring, you would send that message as well, like keep an eye on this guy for us. And they're like, okay, I know to keep an eye on this guy, and, we're, and they're standing by to call the local authorities if need be. So this has been Bob Brown. And as always, think safety first for your employees and your business. And don't, don't just give in to the fact that, hey, I can't do anything. There's a lot of things you can do from cybersecurity to physical security. That's part of what this channel is for, to help people understand how to put these systems in place to make their business more profitable and safe. This has been Bob Brown. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep studying.